It is for me. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Gotta do it. myself, Stephen. I think when you were whispering. What, what about for Linda? Can, is she clear? What did she talk? Can we hear her? Even though she's speaking this direction, the mic is behind her. children, eight to five. Um, I've been married for 11 years. I'm a housewife, domestic servant, uh, <laughs> that's what I like to call it. Um, I am an incest victim. No, I, no, I would say that. I'm an incest survivor. <laughs> um, I've been working on that um, off and on for about um, five years. I've been in and out of therapy. So I go in as needed, I guess. Um, so, all to me. <laughs> what brings you here today? 
I don't know. Something told me I should come, and I did. What would you hope to gain from this experience today? Learning more about me. So love to go. Yeah. What makes Linda tick? What makes her go? Sunshine. We told her. I don't know. What are you feeling right now? I'm upset because I don't know me. My identity has been taken away. I was never allowed to be me. I was handed a script. I knew how to act. I'm 32 years old now. Nobody's handing me a script anymore. I don't know how I'm supposed to be. And I need to find out. Do you know who you are? It's a wide question. I can be anything. I'm a chameleon. Yeah. Way down deep, where your heart beats. Who is it? Tell me who she is. A lot of different people. I'm a frightened child. I'm a strong woman. Extremely smart, a lot of horsemen. I'm a jack of all trades and a master at none. I can do anything. I can be anything. I don't have um, I don't know, the finished quality, the finished sign. I don't have a master's degree. I'm a psychologist with my children. I don't have a master's degree. I'm a secretary for my husband. I don't have education for that. I don't have a diploma for that. How do you suppose you do all of those wonderful things without the pieces of paper? I set my mind to it and I just do it. But it means nothing out in the world. It does. Yeah. Can you tell me why it doesn't? You're not important unless you have a piece of paper saying that you're important. You're not smart unless you have that piece of paper say, saying that yes, you qualify as being smart. going to be doing in 10 years. My children are going to be grown. And I'm scared to death of being an old woman by herself. Complaining about her aches and pains. And nobody there to listen. What scares you about that scenario?
does not have anybody around to verify that it is important. Um, I don't want to be looked upon as being stupid um, because I did choose to stay home with my children. Um, But I also know I'm, I can't be a super woman. I'm not that type of person. I can't split myself that way. Who in your life would you say that you're close to? Do you trust? Are there any people you trust? Family, friends? Marco. Marco. Mm-hmm. You trust Marco. I can be me around her. Tell me about that. She's basically like me, um, except she is divorced and struggling. Um, I can say what I want to say without being afraid she's going to condemn me. harsh with her um, and she hasn't run away. I hear you telling me that with at least one person in your life, Margo, Linda can be Linda without fear of being judged. Is that fair to say? That's true. What does that feel like? I feel home. Home I never had, home that I had to create. Bring me up to date a little bit if you would. Let's come back to her for just a moment. And that feeling of being home. Tell me a little bit about where you came from. No. I came from a family of five. My oldest brother is what they call borderline retarded. Um, I have a younger sister that is smart, beautiful, ruthless, <laughs> everything I'm not. Um, I I talked to my mother. My mother and father are divorced. I've not seen my father in several years, and he has no desire to see me. I guess the feeling is mutual. <laughs> um, my parents are very critical. Um, I was as a child, invisible. I'm not sure I understand. Can you help me understand? With my oldest brother, they paid attention to him because he was retarded and he was special. And with my youngest sister, she was beautiful and cute, graceful, and the youngest, and everyone always paid attention to her. She always drew attention to herself. I was afraid to draw attention to myself. Um, I wanted it, but I was afraid of it. You wanted attention very badly. Mm -hmm. But any attention that I got was negative. So anybody, um, if I wanted attention, you know, I, I, I'd always come back negative. Give me an example. Um, my mother would set me down about every 
three months and tell me everything that I had done wrong. Um, my drawers weren't clean enough, they weren't neat enough. Um, my room, if there was dust under the bed, um, I'd get in trouble for that. Um, they told me that I was too critical of my siblings. <laughs> um, I couldn't. I, just, I couldn't do anything right. According to your parents? Yes. How did you feel about yourself during those years? Who were you? There was no self. There was no self? No. I was a robot. I knew. You know, from the time I got up, I knew exactly what was expected of me. And I knew if I didn't get that done, then, um, be in trouble. I don't remember any hugs from my parents. Um, nice hugs, you know. I don't remember, um, no, I, I, my mother would say, I love you, but But she didn't say I love you very, very often. Only when she saw that I was going over the deep end. Um, I told my mother about the incest five times, and five times she turned away from me. And to this day, she swears she didn't. No. You might understand that your father. Yes, so was my father. <clears throat> There's a word. That I'd like to ask you about. I'm trying to imagine the things that you've talked about and to be there as much as I possibly can and I feel like a victim. Would that be a fair thing to say that you feel? Prisoner. Prisoner. What is a prisoner? that's nobody. They have no rights. They're told when they get up, when they eat, when they brush their teeth, what they wear. Everything is mapped out for them. And they go through the motions. Mm -hmm. Day to day, nothing changes. There is no happiness. A lot of anger. Resentment. Fear. Because I'm on death row. I didn't know from one day to the next if I was going to live. You feared for your life. of what you just talked about. You just learned it today. It still is. A lot of it. A lot of it. A lot of it. When I'm with Margo, it's different. And that's the only time it's different. Let's go into that for a minute. <laughs> okay? When you're with Margo, this very special person. How are your feelings different? Physically, my body is lighter. Um, the muscles aren't tense. a home, uh, some, something warm, like I wrapped myself in a comforter, a nice warm comforter. Um, I 
where a mind can rest. I don't have to replay anything because whatever I say, I feel like went somewhere and it hurt instead of bouncing back. Let me try some words. And only you can know if they're right. Do you feel safe? Yes. Do you feel protected? Am I free? Yes. <laughs> you jumped out. <laughs> what did it mean? I am free. I mean, I can breathe. I'm free. I can fly. And she doesn't do anything. I mean, if she's just in the room. I feel like nobody can touch me. Children. I have to think about my marriage. I have to think about anything. I don't have to think. I just have to exist. children. I am married, but I'm a single parent. I have to ask him to come home so that I can have some free time. You talked earlier about what you felt like and what you went through as a child. Mm -hmm. following a set of instructions. Is that pretty much the way it is today, or is it different? No, I still follow instructions. I still try and do the proper society things with my children. I still try to do the, or I, I know I have to do the wifely things around the house. I have to get, you know, these things done to meet my quota. Um, the script is still there. The script is still there. The script will let people that I meet that I have to be during the day. I wake up in the morning and I sit there and I think, now I have to get the laundry done. I have to sit down and teach my youngest how to count. I have to make sure I get business phone calls done. Um, I have to make sure my husband has his underwear clean.
peeing away, peeing out into a field, and sitting there. Field. Yeah, not no field. In the country. In the country. Mm -hmm. Let's let's go there for just a minute in our hands, okay? Let's go to that field. Nice little breeze is blowing. The trees, the grassy hills. What's that like? Don't forget the sunshine. <laughs> and the sunshine. <laughs> penetrate my body. You can hear the birds. You can hear the creek. I'm safe. Nobody's around me. Nobody can hurt you. Mm -mm. Time of rejuvenation. When I want to leave, I leave. So the decisions of your life in the field and with Marco are up to you. Mm -hmm. You had a robot. Mm -hmm. Nobody's there to expect anything, so I don't have to do anything. shelf are the ingredients, any ingredients, for the perfect life. What would you pick down? What would you pull down from that shelf? Linda's perfect life. Stack of airline tickets. <laughs> A telephone that it is. I can make unlimited phone calls.
like a little bottle of happiness. A bottle of happiness. Uh -huh. It's a wonderful cold. <laughs> Let's take it down one shelf further. What goes into the bottle of happiness? All the things you mentioned and strongly and it goes along with your word of the person earlier and I, I sense and I feel that those things you pull down get you out of what you perceive now to be a trap. Do you feel trapped? Mm -hmm. Is that a fair word? Very. I get my little ducks in the row. And I, if I'm going to do that, it has to be done where it doesn't hurt anybody else. I have to start with me. But uh, they take time out for me. I am taking time away from others. Things that I'm supposed to be doing. To take time for them takes away from time that you're supposed to devote to the robot. Mm -hmm. Is that a fair thing for me to say? So you're in a situation where 
face or circumstances now that you don't see can change. At least not any time soon. No. Is it accurate? I look at you and I see a very strong woman. And I wonder if you could tell me how you've made it this far. What keeps you going? Despite the circumstances, despite the difficulties, and despite the pain. I have to do what's right. My other people. I have to make sure that my four children don't turn out like I did. Are you finished yet? Is the story over? No? There's more yet to come? Mm-hmm. I just don't know what yet. <laughs> Talked about education. What are some things that you want to do? We go back to school if you want to. Mm -hmm. change the situation perhaps to make it more bearable. Just being more spiritual, I guess. being the best that I can be with whatever I do. Listening to my heart. Not being afraid of Criticism, I guess. Being able to, to be criticized, to have told less than wonderful things, and take it without having it become a part of it. Is that a way to put it? Mm -hmm. Is it fair to say then that right now, if you're criticized, you take it as a statement of who you are as a person? Just touch. My mother. I always said to her, or she would say to me, you know, what she would tell me, that I am very critical of people. And then she didn't like that. And then I would think to myself, 
but mom, that's a part of me. Does that mean you don't like me? Somebody doesn't like something of the way I do something. It's you really don't like me. Can you describe yourself to me? If I just ask you the question, if somebody said, Who is Linda? Give it your best shot. Him and Shell walking around. I'm here by mistake. I shouldn't be here. Shell one. I, I'm not exactly sure what it is I'm supposed to be learning here. Are you carrying this? I'd like to think so. Are you a loving person? I'd like to think so. You mentioned something earlier that would, you would like to reach your dreams and to feel complete. that side of the list was longer than the other. <laughs> the good side is very short. Marco is your friend. Mm -hmm. Why do you think you are Marco's friend? She says that I That everything that I make or touch has a good quality. Everything you make or touch has a good quality. You listen to me. I guess I'm everything to her she is to me. Hey, <laughs> you're everything to her that she is to you. Yeah. She sounds like a wonderful friend and a fantastic person. Would you feel that way about her? By my standard, yeah. What about you to her? Do you think Margot is a good 
good judge of character. I don't know. <laughs> I think she know what she, she knows what she wants. Maybe she wants to be around. Yeah. So she knows who and what she's looking for. Characteristics that you require. Mm-hmm. And she's your friend. Mm-hmm. And she looked for you. And you're her friend. What does that tell you? Mm. <laughs> What's this one for? But I just wish I could spread it out to the rest of my life and not just that small area. Have you ever been to a pond? What? Or a pond or lake? Oh, mm mm-hmm. Pool of water? Mm-hmm. Did you ever do some of this to his kids? What's a rings? What's a rings? They ripple. Mm-hmm. They ripple. And they ripple. And they spread all throughout. Is that, is that right? Mm-hmm. And maybe right now, who you are with Marco is that very first ripple of your life. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Can you even begin to see those good qualities that we talked about as a part of you when you're with Margo? Mm-hmm. And I think that they don't disappear when you leave. But doesn't the bad over shadow the good? Shadows the good. Just by saying that, you're telling me that there is good. Mm-hmm. Are you not? That's true. So, what are you going to work on? If the bad overshadows the good, if the good is there, that pebble of kindness and love and caring and listening is there. I have to build up that and I can't seem to knock down the other end. <laughs> Working on building up the good stuff. Mm-hmm. Making a second group. Mm-hmm. It's time. Yeah, it's not fast enough. I want immediate satisfaction. <laughs> so now I get the idea you wanted it yesterday. Yeah, uh huh. <laughs> or last year. Would have been nice, yeah. But you're young. I feel like I'm behind. Mm. I should have had this stuff when I was younger. Where the anger and the resentment comes from. But you're here with me today to work on making a better future, are you not? I mean, if we had to describe it in one sentence, are you not trying to improve your life to make a better future? That's true. I think you're one of those rare people when they are 50, 60, and 70 can wake up and look back and give your age and not have to say, I only wish I had. You'll never have to say that because what you're doing is paving the way for a happier future, a more meaningful future, a kinder future. When you wake 
up. You won't have to frown because you'll already be smiling. I basically need to start concentrating more on the good than the bad. Concentrating is one thing to start with. Right? You've already started to recognize the good for the first time that we spoke. At the beginning, you said there was no good. Now we've somehow pulled some out. There all along, it was just pretty still. What else is good? When was the last time you smiled? Maybe 30 seconds. <laughs> Asking me when was the last time I was happy? I don't know. I've never been happy. Not even with work. Yeah. What about in that field? Are you happy in that field? Yeah. identify it. I'm not frightened. For joy. <laughs> um, I'm just, I'm just there. How do you feel? Anything you can put your hand on? No, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you smiled six times in the past 45 minutes. Should I? <laughs> Seven. Okay, now you gotta keep count, and that's really gonna make me self conscious. <laughs> I like being amongst grown ups. I don't get that very often. If we just had to call it something general, do you feel good? I guess. I don't know what is good. I feel okay. If you're not hurting, I'm okay. If you're not hurting, you're okay. If I'm not hurting, if I'm not afraid, if I'm not angry, I'm okay. Is this the way you feel with America? No. energy pumps through my body. Um, I feel good.
please. No, it, it's still different. myself to feel that warmth. What if it oversteps? Other people. What, what can you do about it? If you feel like you're overstepping. You and I have to back off. I'm giving birth. Giving birth. Mm -hmm. It hurts. It hurts.
I have to convince my my brain but my heart already knows that I am basically good. Did, did you just hear yourself? You know? <laughs> please say it again. I want you to hear this. Say it again, please. I have to convince my brain what my heart already knows. Basically, good. Your heart knows you. Are. It beats at every beat. It's one of the longest roads in the world. From the head to the heart, from the heart to the head. Let me ask you kind of a strange question. Right now, you know you're good. Most of the time, you feel very unhappy. Yeah. How many unhappy people do you think there are? Far too many. Millions. Are you doing anything to change your unhappiness? You're looking for me. You're looking for you. Let me let me try it another way. Are you doing anything so that what your heart knows moves to your head? That you're good? I meditate. I try and be around. Margo more often. I just look for places where I feel good. What are we doing right now? Talking. <laughs> Something else just got triggered. <laughs> you could snap your fingers and tell me that everything's going to be okay in 10 years. I wish I could too. <laughs> I'm a little bit smart like you. Not quite as much. <laughs> we both know that that can't happen. You know you're in for a lot of work. Right. 
than it bears. <laughs> you get it from something else, good. <laughs> Congratulations. I'm going to blush any minute now. <laughs> I can feel it. <laughs> for two days. <laughs> I am. <laughs> I say this to you from the bottom of my heart. With ten people here, with a million people here, you have guts. And you're fighting your tail off. True. Mash, you ever watch that show? I love it. You love it? Uh -huh. Really? <laughs> so you know what I'm talking about when I say Hawkeye. Uh -huh. I love it. Uh -huh. Did you ever see the episode when he was in the operating room and there was a reporter from that army magazine or whatever that was doing a story? Mashing it? Probably, yeah. <laughs> it was operating on a, on a soldier. And the soldier's heart stopped beating. Mm -hmm. Am I ringing a bell? Yeah. And he yelled for the scalpel on the rib spreader. Yeah. And he manually massaged the shoulders, soldier's heart. Uh -huh. Do you remember okay. what he said? No. As the soldier's heart was still not beating, he was massaging it with his very hand. Do you remember what he said as the reporter was at the foot of the operating table? Yeah, I'm exhausted. <laughs> You're exhausted. We had a hell of a good session. Yeah. <laughs> 